Howdy peeps, <clears throat> uh, clean my throat. Welcome to what will be the first part of an hopefully ongoing thing, a build series. Now, I understand and know that many people have done build series before in the past on different uh, vehicles, it usually seems to be planes. And, excuse me, I'll just uh, degunk my finger a little. Um, as I'm mainly known for doing Russian armour, I thought that would be probably the most sensible thing to do. And rather than go for something with thousands of parts or full interiors, you know, uh, mini art or trumpeter, I thought we'd play it fairly simple. We'll go with the Tamiya, the little SU-76M. Now, I don't, don't think I've done a review on this. Let's have a look-see. Nope, it all appears to be in its bag still, still stapled. So, I could, I suppose, do a quick review, but there are plenty of them out and up online, and the general consensus is it's a rather nice kit. Now, what do I do when I start a kit? Well, I decide which kit I'm going to start next. And first thing we do is grab the instructions. Check the box down there. I do have a little, I say side table, it's a fishing seat box that the camera is actually attached to and I, I use it as a side table to hold the kits. Now we have our usual Tamiya background bump on the SU-76. Bloody 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 blah. Probably never get looked at again, and we have our instructions. First page, generally ignore. <laughs> Usually, as I said, I would go through all the instructions, check if there's anything that looks like it might be tricky, awkward, might be an idea to do first or out of order things I might leave off I say in this case it looks like we're starting out with the main well, the main hull and then the fighting compartment which will need painting as we go so we can do that and that will be a bit of fun and now we can see how I tackle that and then doing the wheels and the tracks tracks of this come with a jig to set all the curves and everything so that should be pretty cool and other than that it all looks fairly straightforward and simple uh, so let's make a tow cable out of a piece of string yeah we've done that many a time might see if I've got something else instead and then on to a couple of the painting and marking schemes which are all going to be in Russian green with just a few different numbers on them that's only the two, which is East Prussia 44 and Berlin 45. So this was a very lightweight, nimble little tank destroyer with a 76mm gun, hence 76. But and one of my favourites from World of Tanks as well, especially the low tiers. It's good fun. So, step one, what have we got? Don't want the figures. We want the spruce C and the poly caps. What do we have here? We have spruce C. I suppose to make life easier or better for camera, it might have been a better idea to take it all out of the bag to start with, but at least this way you can see I am starting a brand new kit. And no, I don't have one I prepared earlier. Clear parts we're probably not going to need for a while, so we'll put those back in the box. Check there's nothing come off the sprue in the bag. Add that to the pile of crud. And have a hunt through the box to find the poly caps. Decals. Oh, I would have thought probably in the wheels and tracks bag. No. Nope. Here they are. 
in another bag. Along with a random loose piece of string and another sprue. Which looks like we're probably going to want some bits off straight away as well, so I'll destaple it. I'm, obviously, I'm doing this, I'll, I'll try and do as much of this in cam as I can without subjecting you to hideous shots of the top of my head if I can at all help it. So we're not going to need that. Might need that in a bit. Do need that. And another empty bag for the bin. So we want C78 and C40. And this is the way I usually work with the instructions right beside me. And I can be a little bit candid when it comes to using tools. You'll see me break most of the written rules about using tools. I do cut towards me. I do lick my paintbrush. All these things that you're told not to do, but that's just me. Give my sander a quick clean off on my shorts and take off the sprue gates. That's that one. Trying to figure out what part this is, whether the seam lines will be visible. Probably not, but we'll just take them off anyway. It'll make fitting a little easier. I mean, Tammy are then minute anyway. So I'm, I'm doing this because it's something different for the channel. Um, something different for me to do. Uh, um, it's also, you know, you might, you know, you might pick up a tip or two or a trick or you know you might be able to show me a tip of, well you probably would be able to show me a trick or two but you know, it's point cap in there uh, find a prodder I'll do make sure it's all the way down And a bit of extra thin. I do pop back to one side. Oh, we're doing that back up. Oh dear, where, where, where was I before I got interrupted by actually modelling? Um, yeah, so hints and tips sharing. If you got something you think is interesting or could be a useful tip for me or anyone else watching stick it in the comments because we learn by sharing there's no point having all the information and keeping it to yourself because you know, we all want to become better modelers in this this is a typical Tamiya, well I say Tamiya, most manufacturers do it. Where in the first step you've got virtually all the bags open. He says hoping this is sprue A. Yeah they are, not too on. So I'll leave that one in there. Um, rather than like putting all the parts for one or two steps on the same sprue. They're spread about all over the place. Uh, we've got two sixes and two sevens. That works out quite well. Have a look see at the back. We do have some ejector pins, they are sunken, but it looks like something goes over the back of this plate. Just make sure I'm doing these kind of things actually in shot. Because I do have a tendency to bring stuff towards me. 
And that, ladies and germs, is when you drop something and you end up hunting on the floor for half an hour. Unless it was something... Something small and simple that you can use. So you bugger it and scratch build one. Right. All these need cleaning up. Yes. Is that one done? But yeah. I just thought I'd do this out as, as I say, as a break and a change, something different for my channel. Um, I'll try and break this up into sort of sensible, <coughs> excuse me, sensible length segments, so I won't sit here and build for like three hours straight and then upload it. I'll try and keep it at sort of 20 minutes, half an hour. Uh, we shall see how we go. I might get into a so into the groove as it were and before I realise I look up and three hours have gone by and I've built most of the kit. But we should see if we can avoid that. There we go. In typical easy to follow Tamiya instructions. Let's see. You notice I didn't bother cleaning up the uh, sew hooks because the sprue gate attachment point was on the side that's never going to be visible because it's the mating surface. So I just made sure I chopped it off nice and close. And there we go. So. There we have step one done. Uh, it fell out. Man down, man down, emergency. Stay. There it disobeyed me twice. Right. So, carrying on with the fighting compartment front armour plate. Probably as good a name for it as any. B5. Yeah, I, I, other reasons I chose this kit to do are you know, we've got an interior a, or a partial interior to it, so it won't just be a bunch of episodes of me just sticking bits together, then a bunch of episodes of me just painting stuff. There will be, you know, um, Building, painting, building, figuring out. It'll be, it'll be uh, hopefully a nice mix and won't get too dry and boring. I'll try and keep nattering as much as I can. Um, yeah. As I say, it's a, it's a Tamiya kit, so there probably won't be a huge amount to talk about build wise. It'll probably just pretty much build itself uh, fall together so you're just cleaning up the sprue gates and it's not a surely there must be more than two on that uh, yeah there they are so it's it's not a glossy shiny aeroplane so not only is it a tank it's a World War II Russian tank so yeah I'm not going to bother to polish up all the little bits you know, I do appear to be quite a few ejector pins on this But that is the front of the cab. Um, there's going to be stuff go there. Well, I think I'm going to give them a quick rub over with a sander. Just to make 
sure. Next, that's the front, that's the back, which is the visible side. So, yeah, so, that one's a bit raised as well, so we'll just give them a quick rub till they kind of disappear a bit. This sand has pretty much had it now. So I, I use the UMP sanders, the ultimate modeling products, and I find they last longer than the other commercially available ones. Now admittedly with me and the amount of kits I build, I do tend to go through sanders fairly rapidly, so it isn't a surprise that I kill them. That I've bought. Yeah, I've, I think I've probably tried most of the various other manufacturers out there. Let's see if we've got anything a bit more violent and aggressive as a sander sitting on the bench. How's that one? It's not going to sand them out, but it's going to clean it up. So we could, if we wanted, fill those and some, they're all really shallow though, so I'm not overly fussed. And because, as I say, they are at the front of the fighting compartment, you've got the gun breach and all the ammo stowage. So from experience of, <coughs> excuse me, actually knowing this tank destroyer quite well, having built the mini art one, which is a lot more complicated a kit. Um, I know that's going to be pretty much invisible. I mean, yeah, I have to really look to see it. So, which way around are we? We're that way around. Just a little bit of glue in there, hold that in place. And a little extra thin around the outside. Um, that way around, it looks like. Yeah, so that'll be the actual gun mount, I would have thought. So we'll make sure that gets a glue on every mating edge. Because we're probably going to be giving this glue joint a bit of grief later on in the build. Because it's a stepped joint at the front, we'll put some on the inside as well, just to make sure. There we go. Now we want couple more bits, C46, that was pretty C wasn't it, yes, again yeah, that's, if you've got any questions about how I'm doing or what I'm doing, just pop them in the comments once I've uploaded this and uh, I'll be happy to answer them. As I go, so if there's anything you would like to see on my channel, uh, reviews or more how I do's or another kind of video perhaps, um, let me know and I'll see what I can do about it. I was you know, out of work at the moment, so funding for buying shiny new kits is a bit limited. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll get what I can. So yeah, I'm 
and bear in mind some sort of how I do or tutorials or whatever you want to call them I call them a how I do some could be an absolute pig to film um, kind of thing where you need editing and all that kind of stuff that I don't do because I'm not techy enough and which way around is that that way at the bottom that at the top that makes sense to me I think It seems to want to fit there, so that's where we'll put it. And yeah. Uh -huh. So. how it sticks. Alright. Because the glue hasn't quite set on that yet. Right. Over there, we're in position. Because the glue hasn't set on yet on the first part I put in. The bit with the um a bit, a bit, not over ring. It's written down there, polycap. The bit with the polycap in hasn't the glue hasn't like set because I've put plenty of glue on there. So it was moving about as I was trying to line this up, which probably didn't help matters. But now it's supported on all sides. And isn't going to go anywhere. And with that kind of vague instruction, but it goes over that little lump there. This is a hoop. Definite tweezers moment. There we go. That's page instruction or two done. Three looks a bit more interesting. And we've got to open the lot. Oh, oh, the final sprue bag up. Awkward beggars. Alright, I think it's actually giving us an order that's saying one, two, three. Yep, it's giving us an order it wants us to put things together. So we want a chassis bottom plate and the two side plates. Yeah, I'm just about in shot. Doo -ba -doo. What kind of kits do you guys prefer? Because are you plane guys, you armor guys, car guys, or gals? There aren't too many of us of those in the hobby, but there are. They are there. And I don't know if any of them watch, but if you do, hello. And do you prefer a, a basic Tamiya or Airfix, a more simplified kit, or do you prefer the uber complex, super complicated, massive parts count <laughs> of a Trumpeter or Meng or Tacom, Dragon, that kind of kit? It's, it's nice to just get a feel for what the people who watch like to build or paint or 
Are you historical accuracy buff? Do you think I don't care? I'll paint it whatever colour I like. And are you a war gamer? Are you a. You know, let me know what you do in the hobby. Now, that I might be able to tailor a couple of videos or something, or tailor or switch up the content a little. Give you something more interesting or more relating to what you do. Um, please don't ask me to try and build a car on camera because that's not happening. Um, I've already built one this year, or two this year, that's plenty enough. Uh, <laughs> the actual build isn't the problem. Building them is simple. It's just that bloody glossy paint that I thought I hadn't done them both. Yeah, it's the um, shiny glossy paint that messes me up and takes forever and goes wrong. I so say if I did it more often, I'd probably get quite good at it, but it just doesn't do it for me. Yes, too much. Stick a couple of bits together. That thing still bloody fell out. Ugh. Right. Give it plenty of glue. Yeah. Right, so it's uh, yeah, we got the instructions in shot. It's saying to put that on first, and as it's a big flat platey piece for this rather than the extra thin, I use the Tamiya white thick gloopy gungy stuff. You don't need a huge amount of it though. Uh, it will melt the plastic quite severely if you're not careful. Um, there was a friend who had a problem with that a couple of weeks back, I believe. It, uh, he used this on his wings and it sort of melted the wingtip of his Spitfire, I think it was. Uh, which way around is it? That way, I think. That looks about right. I'll soon tell when we'll try and line the side up. Yeah. Just to be extra sure, I'm just going to run a bit of extra thin around the edge. Just to make sure it's well glued down. And use a couple of. Let me squeeze the bottom edge rather than the top. That's better. Rubber jawed clothes pegs. <laughs> like a glove, Tamia. Too much, but make sure we got all the surfaces covered. And then hold it in place. Pop those off. And I will put the glue on 
this on the outer hole part for this side. Just to make life a little easier when assembling. And yes, this pot of glue is virtually empty. Um, I do like to use the thicker white glue on larger parts as it's slightly hotter than the extra thin. It does take longer to set or go off or cure or dry or whatever the correct technical term is. Um, but it does give a good strong bond and it's thick and tacky so it'll hold the bits in place on its own pretty much. And we just line that one up. Again, like a glove. Oh, how are we doing on time? Oh, we're at half an hour. Well, I think I shall just get this last part in and we shall call it it for that. Now, whereabouts is it saying this goes? In between, yeah. So, yeah, nope. <laughs> Big old gold wallop. Get in there. Ooh. Right. So, we've just gone over the half hour mark. I told you, time flies for me when I'm building. Um, It's going to be that way around. Make sure everything is scooched together. Add a bit of extra thin where we need to, or where we haven't got the uh, white cement along the bottom there. And something slightly out of whack that side, I believe. What we got? What's catching up? Because that side of the hole is not pressing in quite as it should do. push it down a little too far. Yep, that's going to need a little bit of clamping to hold it. Anyway, as I grip that in the death hold, thank you for watching part one. So part two we'll carry on with the build. I won't actually touch this until I do do part two. So you'll see the entire, at least the entire build process on camera. Again, anything you want to watch, anything you want me to do, see, questions to ask, put them down below. Feel free to like and subscribe, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. But if you do leave a thumbs down, please tell me why, so there's something I can do about it. Um, and other than that, enjoy your modelling. Rock on. Peace out. Bye-bye.